fall is in the air and it is a great time to mix in some themed STEM challenges. These five fall STEM activities to try are perfect for one day lessons, sub plans, or even class parties. Let's jump right into these low prep challenges. If you haven't learned this about me by now, I love a good theme. And you heard all about how I themed out my first unit of the year back in episode four for Welcome to STEM Survival Camp. If you take a peek around my house, I have some fall decorations peeking in the corners, on my tables, and of course, I have all of those fall flavored candles. In turn, I don't always teach themed lessons in my class, but it can be really fun to integrate these within your lessons, especially if you need something quick that works for one day, or if you really want to extend it throughout the week, all of these challenges will work perfectly for you and across many different grade levels. So let's jump into these five ideas that you can implement in your STEM space. The first fall STEM activity to try is apple and pumpkin life cycle robotic coding. This is a great low prep challenge that you can use as a station and students can learn all about the life cycle of favorite harvest fruits like apples and pumpkins. You can really do this challenge for anything, but these two are very popular within the fall season. All you need to do is have each stage of the life cycle of the pumpkin or apple on different cards and students will code in a variety of ways to help them learn more about those life cycles. So here are a few variations of this that you can use with the robots that you have in your classroom. This will work well with pretty much any type of robot that you have. The only one I think it might not work best with is Ozobots. Unless you have a special grid, you could definitely do this in a different way. There are grids that you can purchase that are fancy for all of the robots. However, when you are on a budget like most of us, it is sometimes easier to create your own grid that the robots can move along. A grid is really helpful for students to visualize the steps that they need their robot to travel. And most robots for children have very specific movements when they are moving forward one space. You can create your own mat by measuring the distance of one forward move for each robot. However, I have created a lot of these for all the smaller robots and already done all the measurements for you. So you can just print, cut, and glue and create whatever size mat that you want. So for this life cycle coding, create a mat or use one that you have on hand and have those cards that are about the life cycle of that living thing. You can even have students be more involved in this creation process and they can create the cards that they will code to for that specific life cycle. Once all of these resources are created, here are variations that you can play with these cards. If you are creating the grid ahead of time, you can laminate the different stages of the life cycle of the pumpkin and or apple, and students will code to those different locations on the grid. Another variation of this challenge is students can be in partnerships, and instead of having the cards laminated on the grid, they can be movable. One partner can place the cards on the grid facing up and the other partner will code the robot to gather all of the pieces in order of the life cycle and then they can switch. The third variation would be having that partner system, but then they have to code the life cycle backwards. The fourth variation is they can either go backwards or forwards, but instead of the pictures facing up, they can have them facing down and it can be more like a memory game. So there's a lot of different variations to this and with the age of your students and their coding experience, it's fun for them to try these different challenges to really practice their coding skills. The second fall STEM activity to try is creating one page inspiration boards that follow along any of the fall holidays that you are talking about in your classroom. This could be things like Day of the Dead, Thanksgiving, Halloween, or even for the whole month, what are different things that are typical for that month, like for the month of September, October, November, what are different items that people think of for that month? You can have different pictures on this one page board that can inspire students to build 
such as apples, pumpkins, baskets, you name it. You can have these visuals for students and then they can build with any materials that you have on hand, whether it be items in your maker space or even if you want to pull out Lego bricks. I really like using this type of engineer inspiration board with my younger students, especially when a lesson might go quicker than expected. These are really great to have on hand that you can have them printed at a station, or you can just display nice and big on the projector or TV in your classroom. The third fall STEM activity to try is creating a pumpkin bridge. Again, this can be a one day challenge in your classroom, or if you want to dive in deeper, you can extend this for the whole week and use the whole engineering design process. Fairly recently, I had a whole mini series about the engineering design process where I dove into every single stage of that process to give you ideas of how to teach this in your classroom. So make sure to go back and listen to those because that will help you extend your knowledge whether you use the engineering design process already or looking to gain more knowledge about it. For this pumpkin bridge challenge, you can use, again, any materials you have on hand, or I like to use popsicle sticks, tape, and cups, and students will build one of the types of bridges that we talk about in class to hold as many pumpkins as possible. This is fun if you use the pumpkin candies that you can find at the store, or you could use Unifix cubes like I have, and I'll tell the kids that the pumpkins are square because they came right out of Minecraft. And there's a whole lot of buy-in for that, and they don't mind that the pumpkins are different colors. You could do a whole lot of math afterwards, like how many pumpkins could it hold and compare the different bridges in the classroom. You could measure how long the bridge was, how wide the bridge was, how tall. So there's a whole lot of math that you could do with this STEM challenge. The fourth fall STEM activity to try are pumpkin digital activities. Now this one isn't as hands-on, but it's a great way to implement the T technology within your classroom. And again, if you want something that is paperless and easy to assign. So I have two different variations for the grades. So for K through two, I like to create a digital interactive activity that they can use on Seesaw or Google Slides that are quick little tasks on each slide. These tasks are helpful for the students because they can practice their digital skills such as dragging and dropping, drawing on the screen, labeling a picture, all of those tech skills that are important for any type of activity that aren't just pumpkins. You can create each slide that go along with the theme, like pumpkins, and they can do things like measuring a vine using digital Unifix cubes. They can use the shape tools to decorate a picture of a pumpkin or even an alphabet match where students are dragging the letter to help them spell different words such as pumpkins. Having these slides with quick activities helps students be successful and they can work at their own pace and also help each other out when they get a little bit stuck. For the older students, you could do something similar, but I also like to give them digital interactive notebooks that help them explore other outside resources that are kid friendly. This is where I like to pull in other resources such as podcasts, videos, paired selections, the nonfiction and fiction texts, and they can respond within the digital interactive notebook. You could share just one slide a day, you could have it be differentiated where certain kids might have specific slides, or you can have it even open-ended and kids pick the slides that are most interesting to them. So this is a great way to pull in those outside resources that you might have been collecting over the years and assign it in one digital platform. The fifth fall STEM activity to try is having students design a harvest basket. But this would be another fun challenge that you can use the engineering design process or even do it in one day. You can have real tiny pumpkins or real tiny apples or even pretend if you're worried about them getting damaged. And students could use materials like straws, popsicle sticks, or string to create a harvest basket to hold as many of these fruits as possible. This would be a great collaboration challenge and also learn different techniques when it comes to securing items and being able to hold weight. If you wanted to extend this challenge even further, you could have students weigh 
how many apples or how many pumpkins their basket was able to hold. And then you could compare the weights using greater than and less than, place value, or even graphing, depending on the age of your students and the math standards that would tie into those. This was a quick episode today, but just some fun fall STEM activities that you can try in your STEM space and bring the fall into your classroom. So let's go over those five different activities that you can try. First is the apple and pumpkin life cycle robotic coding. Next are fall themed engineer inspiration boards. Third are pumpkin bridges. Fourth is pumpkin digital activities. And fifth is designing a harvest basket. I hope you enjoyed these fall themed activities and definitely share with me what you have done in your classroom. I would love to see how it goes with your students. 